iPadOS 26 is arguably the biggest iPad software update ever, and it brings the iPad as close as it's ever been to a Mac. There are still some limitations, so it's not a complete Mac replacement for me personally, but these are the awesome new features that you need to know about. Quite a few different iPad models are eligible for this new software update, so here's a list of all of the compatible iPads. Feel free to pause to take a look to see if your iPad is one of them. And if you're not sure which iPad you have, it's really easy to check. You can just go into Settings, General, over to About, and then you'll see Model Name. The first major update is a visual one, and it is the new liquid glass look. But it's not just the iPad that gets this redesign. Now, all Apple devices have this more consistent, transparent design with more minimal and dynamic menus. The new look is quite polarizing. I find most people I speak to either love it or absolutely hate it. So if you are one of the people that are still struggling with liquid glass, I will pin in the comments my iOS 26 video that does cover the new design in more detail and gives some tips and tricks on how to live with it. There are also three new apps worth mentioning that you may have noticed downloaded on your iPad along with the software update. The first is a phone app. So now your iPad will have the phone app the same way your iPhone does. The second is the journal app is finally available on iPads as well as on Macs. So this is huge. I've been waiting for this since the journal app first came out on the iPhone. The third one is a brand new preview app that makes working with PDFs so much easier on your iPad. And we'll talk about that app in detail in a little bit. The biggest and most Mac-like new features on the iPad are the windowing and tiling options. And so now when you go to open an app for the first time, it will open in full screen like normal, but in the bottom right corner, you'll see a white handle that you can use to resize the window. So now I can just drag the handle to resize this window as much as I want. And you can now do that with multiple windows. So you're no longer forced into one full screen app. And so you can see here, I have multiple resize windows. I have news, notes, Safari, email, and settings all in the same screen. And so to open a brand new window, you would just swipe up to get to your home screen and then you can tap on the app like you normally would and it'll save the window size. So I had already opened YouTube and sized it so it remembers that in memory. And then if you swipe up from the bottom and hold, you'll get to your app switcher where you'll see all of the windowed apps from that screen together and any full screen apps you also have open. So if I click here, Instagram will open on a full screen and I can resize it if I wanted to at the bottom, but you could also use the four finger swipe to switch between apps. So if I four finger swipe, it'll bring me over to my screen with all of my different windows open. So it's kind of like spaces now, if you use those on your Mac, it's basically brought that to the iPad. Now this new windowing system can honestly take a while to get used to, and you may not even like it. It may not be beneficial at all for your workflow. So what you can do is if you go into settings, you'll see a multitasking and gestures option. And then here at the top, you can now choose the default for your iPad. So if you don't like the new windowed apps option, you can select the full screen apps and that way your iPad will go back to what it traditionally used to be. Or if you're someone that prefers stage manager, that's the third option on the right. I personally find myself actually going between all three options depending on what I'm working on. So what I recommend doing is if you go into your control center, you can now add the windowing as a toggle so you can easily switch between the three. So if you long press in the control center, and add control. You would just search for multitasking to add it to your control center and you can have it as a bigger button like I do or a single one. And then when the toggle's on, you'll be in the windowed app mode. If you turn it off, you'll be in full screen. And if you long press, you'll actually see the option for stage manager. So it's a really quick way to switch between all three modes depending on what you're working on instead of having to go into the settings every single time. And when you're in the windowed app mode, here are a few helpful gestures. You can double tap at the top of any app to open it in full screen. 
and double tap again to revert it back to the windowed size. We unfortunately did lose the split view and slide over option that used to be at the top middle of the screen. I really wish they would have kept that at least in the full screen mode. So now the easiest way to go into split view is with a flick gesture. So now if you take one of your windows and kind of flick it to the side, it'll open there. You can do the same thing with another one to quickly get into split view. And then you do have a little toggle here in the middle in case you did want to adjust the sizing. Another awesome new feature in the windowed app mode is a menu bar like we're used to on the Mac. So for every app, if you pull down at the top, you'll now see more options in a menu bar and it will tell you which app menu you're currently seeing in case you have multiple windows open at once. But then just like on the Mac, you have all of your different drop downs for all of these settings right at the top, which is awesome because a lot of these settings used to seem hidden or it wasn't intuitive to find them. Now I find it's a lot easier. And you'll notice for some of them, there are keyboard shortcuts on the side. So if you're using a magic keyboard with your iPad, the keyboard shortcuts are even faster. Another thing you may have already noticed is we now have the traffic light buttons on the iPad. But it is important to note that the three dots and the menu bar are only visible in the windowed app mode, not if you're in full screen mode. And same thing as on the Mac with these buttons, you can close an app, minimize, or full screen. And so if you close the app, it'll actually close it. You won't see it as an open app, but if you minimize it, you'll still see it as an option here. And then with the green button, if you long press on it, you then get the resizing and tiling options. So you can do the split screen from here or up and down. And even at the bottom, you can do four corners if you want. And here's a pro tip for tiling. If you do use a keyboard like the Magic Keyboard, you can hold globe control and then use your arrows to quickly tile a window. So this notes window, I can use up, down, side to side. Thankfully, the Files app on the iPad got some much needed updates, and so now it's usable. So now when you go into the Files app, you can go over to the list view, and what you can do here is click the three dots on the right to add more columns, so whatever's useful for you, and then to the left of the header, you'll see a faint little divider or handle, and you can just use that to drag and resize the different columns. And now we can also customize folders to help with organization. So if you long press on a folder, you'll now see an option, customize folder and tags. If you click on that, you can actually select a little icon or an emoji for the folder. So these are the icons, but you can click here to actually get your traditional emoji keyboard. And then if you click on tags, this is where you can actually select the color of the folder. So I'm going to do purple and then there you go. Another great new thing is if you long press on a folder, you'll now see an option to keep downloaded. So if you have a folder with really important documents, maybe contracts or something you always want to make sure you can access, this is awesome because even if you're up in the air without Wi-Fi or reliable Wi-Fi, you'll still be able to access the files in that folder. If you work with a lot of different file types on your iPad, what you can now do is long press on the individual file and you'll see an option open with. So now you can set a default app to open that specific file type. So if you want your PNG files to always open with your photo editor of choice instead of the default preview app, you can set this up once for all of those types of files. You can also now have folders on your dock the same way you would on your Mac. So if you long press on a folder towards the bottom, you'll now see an add to dock and you can even add multiple folders to the dock. So they'll still be in the files app, but now when you go to the dock, you'll see them here. And so when you click on them, by default, it'll open in the fan view like this. I don't always enjoy that. So if you long press on it, you'll see a few different options. You can sort 
the files in the folder, but you can also select here the grid view. So when I click on it, I find this looks a little bit more organized. And then you can long press again and go to options if you ever want to remove it from the dock. One of my favorite new updates is definitely the new preview app. So now when you go into your preview app, at the top, you'll see the option to create a new document or even scan a document right from here. And then at the bottom, you'll see some of your recent documents or images. So if I open up this PDF, you'll see on the left, you have your table of contents. So you can scroll through the different pages. You can click on the down arrow to the right of the name to do things like lock it, duplicate, even rename the file. You have your markup button with all of your tools if you wanted to highlight anything in the PDF. You can also pinch in and out to zoom and resize. If it's a PDF with text boxes to enter information, you can click this to autofill and you'll then see a plus here at the bottom that you can click if you wanted to like add a signature or add your own text box to the PDF. This button is if you wanted to crop or resize, you would just do that click and you can say crop or copy that section. You can easily rotate the different pages. If you click on the eye, you get all the document information, which is super helpful if you wanted to check, let's say the size of the PDF. You can quick share, you can search for anything in the document. And if you press on the three dots here, one of my favorite things is you can actually switch it to a dark background to make it easier to read. And then if you open an image, you can do a lot of the same things, but if you click on the three dots, you can also easily adjust the size of the image. So if you're trying to upload an image to a website or somewhere and it's saying it's too big, you can just come in here and play with the width and the height to make the file size smaller. And if it's an image with a clear foreground and background, you can also come into the three dot menu to quickly remove the background from the image. You can also access the new menu bar at the top. So if you did ever want to, let's say, undo or redo anything or use any of these other tools, you can do that as well. And if you didn't already know, Apple finally fixed the Photos app with the iOS and iPadOS 26 updates. So if you wanna see what it looks like now, watch this video next. So that's it, have a great day, bye.